Let's begin our lesson with console orientation. During the next few slides, I will attempt to describe the functions of the buttons located on the control panel. First, we have the calculator keys. Anywhere within the control that you can enter a numerical value, that, that value can be entered as a math function. This ability allows us to convert data from metric to inch as the information is entered, and it also allows me to alter existing data in the control. I simply highlight the field using the math functions and the numerical keys. I'm able to um, change the value of whatever field that I'm in. Next, we have the draw button. It's located in the small red square here on this slide. This button is used to execute whatever geometry has been programmed up to a given point when it's depressed. Again, if you have a single screen control, this is going to simply be displayed on the main screen of the control. If you have a dual screen, it will appear on the right hand screen. Next we have the menu keys. These allow us to move between necessary menus within the control. In the red box here we have on the far left the input button. This allows us access to all of the screens that are necessary to set up, program, and operate the machine. Next to that we have the review button. This is going to display an outline view of the program when depressed. The review button is very helpful in navigating the program as well as manipulating blocks in the program such as cut, copy, paste, delete, and so forth. To the right of the review button we have an auxiliary button. This will bring up another uh, screen within the screen, a little box that will appear that has quick keys. These quick keys allow me to go to any specific screen necessary by simply pressing one of the buttons. For example, if I wanted to go to tool setup, one method that is commonly used is to press the input button, you get the tool review button, and then you simply select the tool setup button. If I wanted to use the auxiliary, when I hit the auxiliary button and the box appeared, there would be a button that said tool setup. I simply would have to press that once, it would take me right to the particular screen that I'm desiring. Next to the auxiliary, we have the help button. The help button is going to bring up an online, or excuse me, an on-screen help file that should be content specific to whatever it is that I'm trying to do at that moment. If I am trying to do a mill frame block and I depress the help, it should bring up a portion of the help menu that applies to mill frame. If it doesn't, there is a search field. I can search by keyword for any of the information that I'm looking for to do whatever it is that I'm trying to accomplish at that moment. Next we have the manual function keys. In the left hand red box we have the spindle on and off. These buttons are going to be used to manually turn the spindle on and off. To the right of that same box we have the tool changer buttons. These will be used when I'm trying to initiate a tool change manually. We have, to the, in the right red box, the auto, primary, and secondary coolant keys. The auto button will use whatever uh, coolant condition is set up in the tool setup for a particular tool. Primary forces on the flood coolant, and secondary will use either through the spindle coolant, if the machine is equipped with that option, and if not, it will be used to turn on the air blast if it has been uh, wired in such a manner. We have machine modes. The far left is the auto button. Uh, this is used to execute any conversational NC program that happens to be active at the moment. We have the interrupt button. When this button is depressed, the Z axis will, will lift all the way to the home position. Coolant will stop, the spindle will stop, and the machine will be entered into what we call as a semi-manual mode. At that point I can use the hand wheel or the jog buttons to move the axis in any move any axis for any reason. Let's say for example I have just roughed out a very deep pocket. There are lots of chips that are are uh, present in that pocket and I want to clean those out before the finish tool comes in. I can simply hit the interrupt button, bring the table forward, use the air gun or what have you to blow out that particular pocket. Maybe I need to pull chips out of a hole before a tap enters. Whatever the case may be once I'm done, I simply select the auto button and the cycle start. The machine will resume exactly where it left off. X and Y will position, the spindle will kick back on, the coolant will come on, Z will drop down into position, and all movement will continue from that point on. 
This is used in both conversational and NC programming. This button is available. Uh, next to the interrupt, we have the single block. This puts the machine into a single block mode, meaning every depression of the cycle start button will execute one block or one movement of the program. To the right of the single start, I have the test button. Under test, I have the ability to go into a speeds and feeds optimization screen. This screen gives me a few soft keys on the side of the screen that allow me to set speed, set feed, and set plunge feeds based on where my potentiometers are set for axis and spindle speed. For example, I've programmed a block and I've used my best guess for spindle speed and feed rate. Based on my setup or the tooling used, maybe I'm getting some chatter or the cut is not quite as efficient as I hoped it would be. If I'm in the test mode under speeds and feeds optimization, I can simply adjust the axis feed rate and the spindle speed overrides until I find that sweet spot for that particular setup. Once that is reached, I can then depress one of the three buttons for set speed, set feed, or set plunge, and it will physically change the values in my program so those values now become 100% settings. The last button in the red box here is the manual button. This gets me to screens where I can uh, do my tool management. I can initiate tool changes. Uh, manual function setup features such as rapid positions. I can command an X, Y, Z rapid position based on part uh, zero or machine zero. Um, I can set the feed rates for my rapid, um, rapid movements. We have the edit keys. In the upper box we have the basic edit keys you would expect, insert and delete, home and end, and page up and page down. In the bottom red box we have the cursor arrows. Up and down and previous and advanced. We refer to our left and right buttons as previous and advanced, not left and right. The reason for that is if you're on a page that has two columns and the cursor is on the left side of the screen. If you want to move to the right hand column and you depress the right arrow key, you are not going to move to the right column. You will then advance to the next screen, the next block, the next tool, and so forth. So that's why we refer to those as previous and advance. The override potentiometers, we have the axis feed rate to the left. That has a setting from 0 to 150%. So these potentiometers can be used to stop movement. We have the middle one for rapid override. That is from 0 to 100% of whatever the program parameter setting is for your particular machine. Although a machine may be capable of rapiding at 1,300 inches a minute, you may have chose to set the program parameter to a smaller value. Therefore, this rapid override is a percentage of whatever setting you have put in that program parameter. And the one on the far right is the spindle speed override, and that has a setting from 0 to 150 percent. Brings us to our jog unit. In the upper right corner, we have the store machine position button. This button stores data for tool and part setup. Um, you simply would highlight the field, and then you depress this button, and it will teach the information into that particular field. We have the three blue buttons, which are increment buttons used with the hand wheel. The times one is one ten thousandths of an inch per hand wheel graduation. The times ten or the middle button is one thousandths graduation per click. And the far right one is times ten times one hundred or ten thousandths of an inch per uh, click of the hand wheel. Directly below that we have the plus and minus keys. You press and hold these continuously, movement will continue until you release the button. And just below that is the potentiometer that we use to control the feed of those plus and minus keys. And the very bottom button there, or bottom knob, is used to select the axis uh, in, that we wish to jog at this time. Some important buttons that um, you'll use just about every time you set up or operate the machine are the input, review, and manual buttons. Again, the input button allows us access to screens necessary for setup, programming, and operation of the machine. The review button will bring up an outline view of the program and again we use that mostly for program navigation and manipulation of blocks in the program such as cut, copy, paste, delete, and so forth. The small red square 
around the manual button that indicates that we will use the manual button for any kind of manual setup function that we need to do uh, tool management or execution of tool changes we may insert a uh, I'm sorry uh, adjust the rapid feed um, feed rate under the manual screens as well so one of these three buttons is going to be used to do just about anything it is that you're trying to find within the control. It's usually under one of these menus.